بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بسم الله محمد في كان ريد إن شاء الله بسم الله عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته um, so, um, uh, start, which, which um, book is this? I'm just going to try to download it on my um, laptop. It's a bit small on my phone. It's, it's in the it's it's in the um it's in the folder which was shared. Yes. Um and and this, so this one, one is... this one is uh, Abul Qad the first one. Okay. Um, Risal al Qushariya um page number thirty in the PDF. Perfect. Thank you. Thirteen. Oh, sorry. The three zero, yeah? Yeah, three zero. Author's introduction. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Okay, Bismillah. Author's introduction. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. Praise be to God, who has no rival in the greatness of his sovereignty, who is unique in the splendor of his might, who is dignified in the supremacy of his oneness, who is made holy by the exaltation of his eternity, to whose magnitude of essence there is no likeness or challenger and who is elevated in his attributes above any limitation or deficiency. His are the attributes that pertain to none but him alone, and his are the signs that testify that he is not similar to his creatures. Blessed is he, the possessor of, high, of the highest dignity. There is no boundary to encircle him, no device to entrap him, no time to confine him. No one can be his helper. There, there can be no offspring next to him, no number to count him, no place to count to, to contain him, no time period to embrace him, no understanding to measure him, and no imagination to picture him. Far removed is he from such questions as how is he? Where is he? Or statements such as, through his creation, he has acquired beauty. Or through his actions, he removed from himself imperfection and deficiency. For nothing is like unto him. He is the hearing, the seeing. No living thing can overcome him. Omniscient is he and omnipotent. omnipotent. I praise him for what he possesses and what he produces. I thank him for what he withholds and what he bestows. I, I place my trust in him and am satisfied with him. I am content with what he gives and what he does not give. I testify that there is no deity but God and that he has no partners. This is the testimony of the one who has absolute confidence in his uniqueness and the one who seeks to secure his assistance. I also testify that our Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his elected servant and his handpicked trustee and that he is God's messenger to all his creatures. May God bless him and his family who shine like lights in the darkness. May God bless his companions who are the keys to the true guidance, and may God greet them all with numerous greetings. This is an epistle that the poor one in need of God's most most of God most high, Abdul Karim Hawazin al Hushairi, has addressed to all the Sufi community in the lands of Islam in the year 437. And now to the main topic, may God be pleased with you. God has made he, this community, his friends of choice, 
and placed them above the rest of his servants and immediately after his messengers and prophets. May God bless and greet them. He has rendered the hearts of the Sufis repositories and his mystery and his mysteries and marked them off from the other members of his community by his resplendent light. They are the saviors of all other creatures, who in each and every state of their of theirs remain with God and through God. He has cleansed them. He has cleansed them of the turbidity of human nature and elevated them through the realities of his oneness that were revealed to him, to the vantages from which they con contemplated God. And he has granted them success in acquiring the good manners in serving their God, and he has given them insights into the working of the decrees dispensed by their Lord. In this way, they have become capable of fulfilling all the obligations imposed upon them by God and realized in the most perfect manner all his dispensations in their regard. Then they, re then they return to God, may he be glorified and exalted through the sincerity of their need of God and in the state of humility. They refused to rely on the good works they had done or on the pure spiritual states that had been bestowed upon them. For they knew that God, may he be great and elevated, does what he wishes and selects any one of his servants he wants, while his creatures cannot pass judgments on him, nor can any creature have any right against him. His award is the beginning of all beneficence. His punishment is the just verdict and his command is the final judgment. No, may God show mercy on you, that the majority of those true Sufis have become extinct, and in our age, nothing is left of them but their traces. As a poet put it, as for the, as for the tents, they look like tents, and yet I see that the women of the tribe are not the ones who used to live in them. This Sufi path has been overcome by weak weakness. Nay, the path has in fact completely disappeared. Gone are the Sufi elders, in whom one could find guidance. Few are the young men whose exemplary deeds and, and customs deserve to be emulated. Scrup scrupulosity has disappeared from the world and rolled up its prayer rug, whereas greed has gained strength and tightened its strange hold, its stranglehold. Respect for the divine law has departed from the hearts of men, and they have chosen the neglect of religion as their support and rejected the difference between the permissible and the for forbidden. They have made disrespect and shamelessness their religion. They have set no store in the devotional acts and become remiss in fasting and, pray and praying. They have galloped around in the field of neglectfulness and leaned towards those who blindly follow their lusts. They have thought little about committing sinful they have thought little about committing sinful deeds. At the same time, they have availed themselves freely of the things they borrowed from the commoners, women and rulers. However, they are not satisfied with indulging in all these evil deeds. They have begun to refer to the highest divine mysteries and mystical states and to claim that they have freed themselves from the bondage of servility and attained the realities of divine union. They also claim that they reside in God, who rules over them with his decrees, and that they have become completely obliterated in him. Therefore, God cannot condemn or blame them for what they do and what they do not do. They have also claimed that the mysteries of divine oneness are unveiled to them, that their souls are taken away from them completely unto God, and that they have lost the properties of their human natures. 
after having been completely anni annihilated in God, they have found themselves in the presence of God's eternal light. Therefore, when they speak, it is someone else who speaks on their behalf. And when they act, it is someone else who performs their acts for them. Or rather, they are caused to act by someone else. Although in this age of ours we have suffered a lot of this affliction, some of which I have just shown, I have restrained my tongue from lengthy condemnations. I have done this out of concern for this Sufi path, for one should not speak ill of its people. One should not give their opponents a cause to condemn them, since in this country the suffering of this path at the hands of its opponents and accusers has been particularly severe. I do hope that the cause of this weakness will be removed and God, glory be to him, in his graciousness, will warn those who have strayed from the prophet's exemplary custom by abandoning the good manners of this path. Since our age keeps bringing only more and more difficulties and the majority of our compatriots continue to stubbornly adhere to their corrupt ways and to blindly persist in their delusions, I have begun to fear that the hearts of men might think that this whole affair from the very beginning rested upon all those faulty found foundations and that its early adherence full of the same corrupt habits. So I have composed this epistle for you. May God generously reward you. In it, I have mentioned the lives of the masters of this path, their good manners, their high morals, their relationship, relationships with one another, their beliefs, that they hold, the beliefs, their beliefs that they hold in their hearts, as well as their ecstatic states they allude to and the characteristics of their spiritual ascent from the beginning to the end. In this way, this episode would give strength to the followers of this path and make you testify that my presentation is correct. As for me, in spreading these laments, I shall have a diversion end from the generous God a favour and reward. So I seek God's help in what I am about to mention and ask him to protect and defend me from error in this undertaking. I plead to God for forgiveness and pardon. He alone deserves praise and he alone is capable of everything. Oh, you come. <clears throat> Um, some prophetic traditions and sayings. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and they shall always be in my people 40 who have the nature of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, be abstinent and you will be the most worshipful, worshipful mankind. Um, and he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best detachment from worldly positions is the contentment of the heart. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, The best of good works, the purest of them in Lord's sight, the highest of them in ranks, better than giving gold and silver in charity and fighting enemies and striking their necks, is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, beware of the insight of the believer, for he sees with the light of God. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, the first thing that God created was my spirit. And God said, uh, uh, If you if if you had not been, I would not have created the spheres. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the generous are near to God, near to men, near to paradise, and far from hell. The miser is far from God, far from men, and far from paradise, and near to hell. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, glory be to him who alone knows what he is. 
And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Glory be to him who expresses his, his own tawheed with the tongue of his servant. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Glory be to him who has set down no path for his creatures to know him, save the incapacity to know him. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God and his messenger should be more beloved to the faithful than anything else. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God created human being in his own image. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God does not look at the ritual prayer in which a man does not make his heart present with his body. Know that God does not answer a supplication from a heart that is, heed a heart that is heedless and distracted. <coughs> And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God has his folk among the people, the folk of the Qur'an, who are the folk of God and his elect. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God has placed repose and delight in contentment and certainty, and distress and sorrow in suspicion and anger. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God has servants whose bodies are in the world, but whose hearts are with God. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God has 70,000 veils of light and darkness that separate man from him. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God has not created anything he loves more than he loves Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his family. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God instructed me in correct behavior and made my instruction excellent. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God is beautiful and loves beauty. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God is jealous and the believer is jealous. God's jealousy is a quality that is aroused when a, the believing servant commits what God has forbidden. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God said, Sincerity is a secret taken from my secret. I have placed it as a trust in the hearts of the servants of love. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God said to Adam, there, um, there the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their yearning for the, the encounter with me has become drawn out, but my yearning for them is more intense. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, God says, make remembrance of me and I will make remembrance of you. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the good deeds of the pious are the evil deeds of those brought near to God. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, a group among my community will never cease to support the truth until the day of resurrection. They are God's vicegerents in the earth and his elect creatures. It is they who call to his religion. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, He that hears the voice of Sufis and does not say Ameen to their prayer is inscribed before God among the heedless. He, and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, He that prays much by night, but his face is fair by day. And he also said that the pious should come at the resurrection with resplendent faces on thrones of light. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, He who forgives others is forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his sins. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, He who has seen me, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has seen the truth. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, he who knows himself knows his Lord. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, he who makes himself like unto a people is one of them. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the heart of a man is the throne of God. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I am Ahmad without M, Ahad, one. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I am from Allah's light, and the entire creation is from my light. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I am not as one of you. Verily, I pass the night with my Lord, and he gives me food and drink. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I am the city of knowledge, and Ali is its gate. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, <coughs> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am with those whose hearts are broken hearted for my sake. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have a time with God in which one, which none of the 
cherubim nor any prophet rivals me. And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I have returned from the lesser jihad to the greater jihad. I have and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I have come, I have two trades, namely poverty and speech and the spiritual combat. And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I heard Gabriel say that Allah that God said Whoever despises any of my friends has declared war against me. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I take refuge with thee from knowledge that profit a prophet not, and from the pursuit of no and the pursuit of knowledge is incumbent upon every male and female Muslim. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, I was a hidden treasure and I loved to be known. So I created the creatures that I might be known. I was a prophet when even Adam was yet in, in water and clay. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a truthful servant remains continuously truthful and is intent on truthfulness, it will be written with God that he is veracious. And if he remains continuously and if he remains continuously deceitful and is intent on deceit, it will be written with God that he is deceitful. If he, Jesus, and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Jesus has had increased in certainty, um, um, he would have walked. Uh, through air as I have done. If and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, if God desires good for a servant, he uses him. When asked how, he said he grants him success in performing a righteous work before his death. Uh, and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, if you see a man who has been endowed with renunciation of the world and speech, then draw near to him, for he is infused with wisdom. <laughs> and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, if you have these four things, it does not matter even if you lose everything else in, the, in this world. Protect what is entrusted to you. Tell the truth. Have a noble character and earn your income lawfully. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Ihsan is to worship God as if you see him. <coughs> if you do not see him, he nonetheless sees you. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Keep your bellies hungry, your bodies naked, and your livers thirsty, so perhaps your hearts may see God. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Lay no trouble on thyself, but procure every luxury by means of these treasures, and thy acceptance will not diminish thy lot in the hereafter. The Prophet وسلم, refused the offer, saying, O Lord, I desire them not. Keep me, keep me one day full fed and one day hungry. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mark, in, the, in man there is a lump of flesh. If it is kept wholesome, the whole body remains in a healthy condition. And if it is corrupted, the whole body, the whole body is, um, the whole bo is corrupted. Mark, it is the heart. But... And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May the money worshipper perish. May the belly worshipper perish. May the sex worshipper perish. May the clothes worshipper perish. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May you have fear of God, for it is the aggregate of all good things. May you have performed jihad, for it is the monkhood of the Muslims. And may you be occupied with the remembrance of God, for it is a light for you. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, A moment's reflection is better than 60 years of devotion. <coughs> and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, The most excellent jihad is, the, is that for the conquest of the self. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, My friends, saints, are under my cloak. Save me. No one knows them except my friends. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, my heart is clouded, so I ask forgiveness of God 70 times a day. He also said, remorse is an act of repentance. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, My heaven cannot contain me nor my earth, but the heart of a believing slave can contain me. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. Muhammad.
Can you do the next one, please? <clears throat> so we'll start with um, Imam Al Ghazali, his own introduction to the Ahya. Ahya. Yeah. Page um, eleven, page eleven in the book. Eleven, yes. Um. So, so um. The preface of Imam Ghazali. Oh, oh, okay. Um, the Book of Worship. Uh, no, page number 11, Muhammad, in the PDF. Oh, the right. Okay. Yeah, the preface of the of Zali. The introduction to the Yes, inshallah, bismillah. Pref preface of um, Imam, Imam al-Ghazali. Take advantage of the Apostle. Take whatever the Apostle gave you and keep away from whatever he forbade you. 59.7 Quran. Firstly, I believe with the praise of God through our praise is guide insufficient and meager in relation to his real glory. Secondly, I invoke his blessings on all the prophets and especially on his last and the greatest prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Thirdly, I pray for his help and grace that there should remain in me firm will and in incentive for writing the book Ihya Ulumuddin or the revival of religious sciences. Fourthly, O defamer, O heedless, O heedles, O one denying truth, God has removed from my tongue the tie of silence and put on my neck the necklace of arguments and reasons. It is my duty to reply to what you argue. In other words, you have you have closed your eyes from open truths and taken help from whatever is void and untrue and praise ignorance. If a man wants to remove something from the evil practice and habits of men or expresses his wish to translate his learning into action in order that the Almighty may prefer to purify his soul, let him keep himself engaged in divine services and seek to atone for the sins that he has committed in his past life and for which he has become despaired. Let him keep aloof from the society of those persons about whom the Holy Prophet wasallam said, the greatest punishment on the, resur on, the resur on the resurrection day will be meted out to that learned man whom God has not given any benefit to his learning. It is my firm conviction that there is no reason for your refusal to accept the truth except what has been stated below. In other words, the disease which entered into the minds of the majority of people has also entered your mind. The meaning is that they have given up the rules and regulations of acquiring ranks in the hereafter. They do not know that this affair is very serious and grave and that the hereafter is coming forward and this world is re re residing backwards. That death is near and the journey is long. That provision is scanty, dangers are great, but the paths are blocked. The learnings and actions which have got no connection with God are fit to the entire and are fit to be entirely rejected by the wise and those who seek wisdom. It is very difficult for a traveller to the next world to tread the paths because there are injurious and destructive elements on the way, but there are no passport or mean and means to cross them. The learned are the guides to these paths. They are the, the heirs of the prophets. Time has slipped out of their hands. Those who are slaves to evil habits are alive. The devil is powerful over the majority among them and various kinds of sins misguide them. Almost every 
one among them is engrossed in the luxuries of this world and its comforts and enjoyments. For this reason, the majority of them consider good as bad and bad as good. Even the religious learnings and sciences have become obsolete. The lights of guidance have almost disappeared from this world. They duped the people to believe that there is no other science than, the, than that of flah juris, jurisprudence. These are the laws of administration which help the judges in the administration of justice and the rulers in the administration of their countries. They say that there is no learning except that of munazala, munazara or debates. The present learned man cherishes hope of victory over the adversary and seeks means to make him silent. Or they or they informed the people that there is no learning except the silent the science of scholastic theology by help of which a speaker seeks to influence the minds of the public. They see no other science except these three sciences. The sciences of the next world and the learnings of the sages of early times have disappeared from the people, and the learning which was described by God in his holy book as theology, wisdom, light and guidance has been emerged in the deepest recess of forgetfulness. When such is the condition of the religion, such downfall and catastrophe, I have thought it prudent to write this book entitled Ihya Ulumuddin, Revival of Religious Sciences. By this book, the path of early Muslim sages has been opened and the impediments that lay in the path of acquiring learnings beneficial to the prophets and sages have been removed. I have divided this Ihya into four books. Number one, the Book of Worship. Number two, the Book of Worldly Usages. Number three, the Book of Destructive Evils. And number four, the Book of Constructive Virtues. I have discussed the chapter of knowledge at the very beginning as it is of extreme importance. It is necessary to discuss such learning at the outset which is a great help towards divine service according to a saying of the Holy Prophet wasallam. He said, to seek learning is compulsory on every Muslim. I began with the chapter of, on knowledge in order to separate the useful knowledge from the harmful knowledge. As the Prophet wasallam said, we seek refuge to God from the knowledge which is not useful. Number one, the Book of Worship, comprises ten chapters. Number one, knowledge. Two, articles of faith. Three, secrets of purity. Four, secrets of prayer. Five, secrets of almsgiving. Six, secrets of fasting. Seven, secrets of pilgrimage. Eight, rules of Quran reading. Nine, rules of invocations and supplications. And ten, observance of daily duties according to fixed times. Two, the book of worldly usages consists of ten chapters. One, rules of eating and drinking. Two, rules of marriage. Three, rules of earning livelihood. Four, lawful and or unlawful things. Five, rules of companionship and brotherhood. Six, rules of habitation in solitude. Seven, rules of journey. Eight, music and ecstasy. 9. Rules of enjoining good and forbidding evil. 10. Rules of living as exemplified by the character and conduct of the Prophet The Book of Destructive Evils comprises 10 chapters. 1. Wonders of soul. 2. Discipline of soul. 3. Harms of stomach and sexual passion. 4. Harms of tongue, harms of anger, hatred and envy. 6. Evils of the world. 7. Evils of wealth and miserliness. 8. Evils of show and pomp. And pomp. 9. Evils of self-conceit and pride. And 10. Evils of vanity. The Book of Constructive Virtues comprises 10 chapters. 1. Repentance. 2. Patience and gratefulness. 3. Fear and hope. 4. Poverty and asceticism. 
Five, Tawheed, unity of God and God reliance. Six, love and contentment. Seven, intention, truthfulness and sincerity. Seven, self-examination and self-accounting. Nine, meditation. Ten, death and ponder over death. Some of the people wrote books on these subjects, but this book has got five special characteristics which are not found in those books. Firstly, I have opened by the grace of God what they closed up and I have written in detail what they kept secret. Secondly, I have arranged what they kept scattered and I have brought together what they kept separate. Thirdly, I have made short what they made long and corrected what they approved. Fourthly, I have deleted what they repeated. Fifthly, I have made this book easy to understand after disclosing the subtle matters. There are These are the five specialties of this book. I have placed the foundation of this book on four books for two reasons. The first basic reason is that I have incorporated in this book well-arranged rules and their real nature so that they may be easily understood as the knowledge by which the next world is known is of two kinds, knowledge of the outward behaviours and usages and the knowledge of revelation, inspiration, secret and subtle matters. What I mean by this knowledge is the knowledge, of atta is the knowledge for attaining su the summum bonum or the ultimate object of life. What I understand by the science of outward behaviours and usages is the knowledge of practical religion attended with actions in accordance with that knowledge. The object of this book, of this work, is only to narrate the science of practical religion and usages and not to narrate the science of revelation and inspiration as there is no permission to put the latter into black and white though the science of revelation is the ultimate object of, of those who search after truth and the most coveted matter in the eye of the extremely truthful and the best way of acquiring knowledge of worldly use, uses. The Holy Prophet وسلم, did not speak anything about the science of revelation except through signs and symbols because he knew that the wisdom of men to understand it is very little. There is no means of the learned other than the path of prophets, as the learned are the heirs of prophets. The science of practical religion are of two kinds, open science of actions of the physical science senses and the secret science of the functions of the heart. The actions which keep connections with the physical senses are the actions of habit and usages of life. The heart, which comes from the unseen, unseen world and is removed ultimately from the senses, is influenced by either the praiseworthy virtues or the blameworthy vices. In short, the science of practical religion is divided into open and secret sciences. The open science and usages of life. The secret science keeps connection with the condition of heart and its qualities and is subdivided into praiseworthy virtues and blameworthy vices. The second basic reason is this. I see a great enthusiasm for, of students for study of jurisprudence or fiqh. To those who do not fear God, jurisprudence has turned into an object of pride and a means of acquiring name and fame. Jurisprudence is of four ki kinds, kids. As the objects which adorn the dear things are also dear, I think it better that this book should be modelled into the form of fiqh or jurisprudence so that the minds may be inclined to it. For this reason, one who wants to attract the attention of the minds of some men to the science of medicine, remodels it after astronomical tests and writes a book after naming tablets of health. So also I have adopted same, some measures in this work. 
so that the minds of the people are attracted towards such learning which is beneficial to human life. As the minds of the people are attracted to the science of medicine for preservation of the health and of body, so also it is necessary that the minds of the people are attracted to the treatment of the disease of soul and mind in expectation of a happy and prosperous life in the next world, which will last forever and, and forever. Physical happiness is short and transient as compared to spiritual happiness in the hereafter. Physic, physique is mortal while soul is immortal. So I pray to the Almighty for his help and succor for writing and completing this book, Ihya al-Muddin, as he is the most compassionate and the most merciful. Yeah. <laughs>